Have you ever honored somebody who loved cars, but they have since passed? Now, it could be a family member, a close friend, or maybe someone you've never met but just respected, but they touched your life by passing on that passion to you. That is the focus of today's West of Tulsa show. Everybody in house today has someone they want to talk about and some of these folks you've heard about before. So if you have someone special, we would love to hear your story. And coming up, we'll explain how you can send us photos and videos, and we can share that story, everything with everybody on an upcoming show. Welcome to West of Tulsa. I don't want this to be a downer show. It's not going to be a downer. We're going to be uplifting here. It's a celebration of these folks. Celebration of life. That's why I got this hat on. You guys recognize the hat? Yeah. You see that? Yeah, it was in Richard's office. It was in Richard's office. uh, For our guests who don't know who Richard is, who may not have watched show one, explain that. So Richard Keller created all of this. Well, he created West of Tulsa. Yes. And it's a kind of a museum that never opened to the public, a museum that never was. And he was a bomber pilot in World War II, and they worked... It was an aeronautical engineer after that, and he loved cars. In fact, when he died at the age of almost 105, which is pretty amazing, yeah. Yeah. he had 27 or 28 cars and trucks, and a lot of them were here in the warehouse. Wow. And we sold most of them off at this point. I bought a couple, and we've sold them to good friends. Yeah. And yeah, But um, he, he's a ex- perfect example of what we're trying to do today. Absolutely. Right? And what's yeah. on that hat, CJ? Just so I can't really it just see it is, on that It's shot. his bomber. If I pull it down like that, you oh, can see it. Okay. It's the bomber group. It's like a B-25. B- the B-24. B-24. B-24, B-24 bomber okay. group. Yep. And so his office is full of this stuff. Yeah. You know, the old photos, and it shows some of the airplanes that he used to fly. And and he he did serve in World War II. Um, in fact, he, his his big training mission was... He was he was going to be one of the pilots who would um, be part of the Japanese invasion, the mainland. Mm. And he he always said if that ever happened, I wouldn't be here. He just he never believed that they would ever survive that. Wow. So, wow. Yeah. So yeah, with the, but he's a huge car guy, and it's funny because the cars that he bought were the, the kind that were kind of mechanically interesting, you know, Corvairs and Studebakers and. He was an yeah, engineer, tornadoes. engineer type, obviously. Engineer type. Yeah. Yeah. He bought a car for the engineering, yep. not yeah. for the car itself, right. for exactly. the engineering that went into the car. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm, everybody out there listening, watching, they have somebody in their life that turned that passion on with them, and that's what we want to do today. We want to those folks. And mm-hmm. then we're going to have shows coming up where <clears throat> you, you can, hopefully we inspire you <laughs> yeah. to, to send us some information about who you want to honor. And then we'll add the photos and the videos and Dan will work his magic and <laughs> Gabe will work his magic. And, and we'll do beautiful tributes to everybody you want to tribute to. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. have actually heard a couple stories from um, our viewers, you know, that told us about somebody who had passed yeah. or some, something that they did in a memorial for these people. And that's where this idea came from. You kind of came up with it. You thought, Oh, this would be a good show to do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I've got two, uh, two stories that uh, I wanted to share, um, but uh, yeah, they're. I was just like, that's a, a, a car person passing away is definitely unique because they're car people. Yeah, if they're like legit car people, you know, it's I, a tight community. So. Yeah, I mean, I I've heard of stories where some dude was buried with his car. Yeah. Oh I've yeah, seen yeah. Pictures like, of that. Yeah. China and China crazy. and a Mercedes. Yeah, yeah. I've seen that it was story. Some kind of Mercedes. Yeah, like, I've seen that story. I mean, wow. I don't know if that's like the biggest like fuck you to the cemetery, <laughs> yeah. but I was like, that that's something. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I think it's a shame that that car will never get used again, but yeah. you know. Well, maybe it is being used in a way. Whatever, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You never know. Yeah. It's an afterlife car. <laughs> and that's the ghost the of too, that Mercedes, right? Like when, when people pass, then, you know, their builds become very special and, yeah, right. and get passed on or bought and memorialized, basically. And so that's, that's pretty special. Well, and yeah. how many times have you heard where somebody always had the dream of doing a build? Mm-hmm. They never did it. Mm-hmm. They pass. Yeah, and then somebody comes along, a family member, a friend comes along, and, and finishes what the tribute dream was. Yeah. The tribute yeah. You love right. those kinds yeah, of stories. Yeah. But. yeah. yeah. Well, don't want to start with you, Christina. Yeah. Um, I mean, who who would you like to honor? <laughs> well, you know, the one person that really stands out for me and uh, was was a big inspiration was Jesse Combs. Um, she is known for her land speed record for the fastest woman on four wheels, but she passed about five years ago now and unfortunately she passed while she was trying to do a land speed record and and fortunately she was recognized for that and was put in the guinness book of world records for it so Mm. so that was at least that that happened but um she was a huge inspiration for women in the automotive industry she she was a builder she was a welder she 
had a lot of passion for cars. She learned from her dad. Her dad was a mechanic and she worked with her, her dad a lot. Um, she was on a lot of shows back in the day, over Holland, all girls garage. Um, so many, so many Mythbusters. I think she was on an episode of Mythbusters. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, she, she was awesome, and and she was. It was just second nature for her, so she was like a huge inspiration. And I know when she passed, um, they started the Jesse Combs Foundation, uh, which is pretty awesome. They um, offer scholarships for women in the industry, so like welding or mechanics, um, and they're going strong. They're they're a great foundation. They. They actually, I think, had several women that they were able to give scholarships to this year in 2024. So, so yeah, so she, for me, she was like somebody who really stood out in the industry that I kind of grew up watching. Now, um, had you met her before? No, you, I no, wish. Okay. I wish. That would have been really cool yeah. to be able to have met her. But no, uh-uh, I've just watched a lot of her stuff, uh, especially on YouTube. Um, and the land speed stuff is really cool for me just because I have some history with my, my family, my, my grandpa and my uncle used to do Bonneville salt, salt flat land speed stuff. So, so it was always like kind of interesting to me and, um, you know, it's just, it's tragic, but, um, but it's, it's, it's amazing when someone passes like that, some good can come from it with the whole foundation that they started. So, yeah, so she was, she was a big yeah, she was, she was well, I remember when that happened. I, I was, it's one of those things where you go, you, you almost have to stop for a second and go, wait a minute, I know exactly who that is. Yeah, and yeah. she's so young. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah, and that was my she first was, reaction. Yeah. It's like, well, what I happened? I want to say she was like thirty nine. Yeah. Or something wow. When she for passed. for our audience, could you give a yeah. little context about how she did pass? Because that was yeah. a big deal. Yeah. Right? So I guess uh, they they think what happened was while she was running, there was <clears> a mechanical <throat> failure with one of the the wheels. Um, which caused, and she, there, you could tell, they, they said they could tell that she really tried to, tried to like steer and like she, she really tried to do everything she could do. Um, and she, I think ended up just dying instantly when there was some sort of impact. So, Mm. and the car did end up catching on fire, but they said that she passed before that actually happened. So do you know what speed? Uh, yeah, the so was? they ended up getting her in the world record book for five, I want to say it was like 522? Jeez. 522 Jeez. miles an hour? I think it was 522 Holy. or 520 something. That's yeah. insane. That's insane. Yeah, it was insane. Yeah, and it was, um, I think she she <clears throat> broke that record because she had set a record too, I think, earlier on. But, um, but yeah, yeah, so was definitely like 520 something i think yeah wow. there's no margin for error at that yeah speed. I mean, if anything yeah. happens no. you're done yes i mean you go yes. into that expect except accepting the risks obviously you know not to justify it but you know you know like i i could possibly pass away yeah you know, and there's yeah. there's video of her she was giving an interview and she was like i i <laughs> could die like i will i probably will die but you know like Life is short, and I. This yeah. is what I want to do, and um, things don't get done unless you push are willing limits, to push yeah. the limits that's like right. that. So, so she knew. She talked about it a lot, and yeah. um, I think that's just part of how um, people that inspire. Like, that's their their motto. Yeah. You know? When you're so, committed, you're committed. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You know the. Um, yeah, the, the the interesting. So remember the Hammonds, Seth Hammond, mm-hmm. when we were mm-hmm. talking about the show, mm-hmm. and they talked about the three hundred club, yeah. two hundred, three hundred. It can't be mem- many members of the five hundred. That's club. when I hear the five hundred club. That's insane. Uh, that yeah. I mean, five hundred, yeah. even four hundred. <laughs> yeah. I know, right? Like, yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. It's pretty amazing. Well, that's a good one so. to honor. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Wow. And, and and that uh, Jesse Combs Foundation is that what's called? Yeah, Jesse Combs Foundation. Um, they have an Instagram page and a website. Um. I, I would love to be able to do uh, like an all female car show and, you know, try and raise funds for them there. I just think they're a great foundation. So I've, I've shared them a couple of times on the Miss Motorhead page for people. Well, we'll have to do something like yeah. that. Maybe a link. I don't know how you, you, yeah. you know how to handle all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, <absolutely>. Links. Yeah. <laughs> put links to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Put a link <laughs> to <that. laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything? Anything else about Jesse Combs or anybody else? Anybody you else? You know, want to obviously we have like the, one of the biggest people recently who passed away in the last few years was Ken Block. He, yeah. 
he was huge, especially because I'm in the Subaru community, and he was huge in the Subaru community. He did a lot of rally and all, like the whole Jim Connor thing. Like so, when he passed, um, <clears throat> it was kind of a big deal. It was uh, a lot of people memorialized him with stickers and liveries, and mm-hmm. um, he he made a big impact on people's lives. And he, I've had a couple of friends who've met him or had ride alongs with him, and he was just such a great down to earth person. And so it's really awesome to see his daughter. Yeah. Uh, Follow Leah, in his Leah, footsteps, Leah. Yeah. yeah, she um, she just did last last year. I think she did a uh, run up Pikes Peak with his car. Oh um, wow! So it's it's really cool. She's she's awesome, and I she's gonna do big things because of her dad. So it's it's that's it's sad, but again, it's like at least she's she's taking that effort to like memorialize her dad and and do all yeah. these things. So yeah. yeah. I think it's one of the coolest things in the car community when the reactions of what people, the, the, I guess it's a call to action for the fa- friends and family of these people who have passed on. Um, it, you really see the impact. And unfortunately, you see how big the impact was after they passed. But yeah. you see how much and how many people they affected. You know, and uh, even if it's just like, you know, your your homie down the street or Ken mm-hmm. Block or Paul right. Walker Absolutely. or, you know, Jesse yeah. Combs, you're just like, wow, this is amazing. It's, I mean, how could you not? I mean, well, you know, was, you know, Paul Walker is a good example. After he passed, um, he had a home in Santa Barbara up on the Mesa. Mm. And um, we started hearing all these stories of all these amazing things Paul Walker did in the community that nobody knew about. Mm-hmm. And one of them was an example. I guess he went into a, a jewelry store. I don't know which one. And he happened to be standing there for whatever he was doing there. And he heard this young couple talking about a certain ring that they wanted for the upcoming wedding. And I guess it was there going back and forth between which ring they wanted. One was more expensive than the other, whatever it was. Um, Paul Walker told the jeweler to take the, the most expensive one that they wanted, and he bought it. No. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and, and so, you, you know, you wouldn't wouldn't have heard those stories yeah you know? right. yeah. yeah and uh and you find out you know what kind of life they led and how many like you said how yeah. many positive you know how many lives they touch positively yeah so. it, well it just goes back to our show basically is that we're trying to tell stories to leave a legacy forever mm-hmm. with people yeah. um obviously you know <laughs> we won't cover everybody's story yeah. but in, in our lifetimes here yeah. but we try to cover as much as we can because it'd be yeah. nice to memorialize this stuff or m- remember this stuff before people pass sure yeah you know and then even yeah. beyond you know and it's a it's a huge inspiration thing it's yeah. a, the story the reason we love to listen to stories is for inspiration <laughs> yeah. and when you hear stuff like that about paul maybe that will inspire somebody yeah. to go do the same thing yeah. so exactly. it's the the stories are a big deal and if we're not going to tell the stories i mean who is and how are you going to be inspired and yeah yeah so mm. yeah. we've had so many people on the show that if you look back you know where this is episode 42 we've done 41 shows so mm-hmm. far that we've had guests on where it's like I've never heard of this, but what they're doing is amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, the Hot Wheels racing thing. Well, yeah. Think of the lives right. that they're touching. They yeah. got all these little kids out there that are getting yeah. into racing because yeah. of Hot Wheels. That which could be future racers exactly. or builders. Yeah. Or yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So and those, even their parents get into yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, so yes. those stories matter for yeah. sure. And I'm really glad we're telling them. I mean, you're right, Christine. No one else is telling these stories. Right. So we are. And Absolutely. that's that's kind of uh, the goal. I wish Helm was here again. but Because uh, <laughs> Helm was there when Paul Walker passed away. Oh, that's right. Yeah. He was there. Yeah. Um, he, yeah, actually, he told that story a little yeah, bit. He yeah, heard the, he actually heard the crash because uh, they were uh, down the street from the shop that they were at. And, uh, you know, Helm will tell you the story. But after, you know, it was just like he looked at him. He, he waved at him when he walked, drove out the driveway. And then, you know, he was gone. Yeah. You know, just. I can imagine surreal. how that would sit with yeah. someone surreal. when yeah. you've actually yeah. experienced it. And then it makes it. you wonder, because I, I even question is like, it makes me wonder, do I want to hop in a car with a, with a buddy of mine? I mean, yes. Trust. Yeah. <laughs> it's, tr- yes, you are trusting somebody with your life because he wasn't yeah. the one driving when he yeah. passed, right? And, you know, you hear people say, you know, too much car, not enough driver. And, you know, there's all kinds of things that happen. Professional yeah. drivers pass away and all that stuff. But, 
you know. But the end result is the same. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You die, yeah. you die. It yeah. doesn't matter why you died. Right. Yeah. You're gone. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I mean, I thought I was going to die a few times when Steve Feist was taking me for a ride away from the car. <laughs> but, you know. And you're still here. I'm still here. Oh, there you go. That's <laughs> I don't know if I'll be, how much more I'll be doing that, but, you know. But. You got a daughter. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, got exactly. a daughter. You so. got to think about that. Yeah. Who you when you're gone, we'll talk about all the great things you did on social yeah, media. I, I hope one of the stories is how Gabe never finished any of his projects. Because right now, my whole life has been been about not finishing projects. Well, so. maybe your daughter will. Yeah. <laughs> I hope it's so. a leg You're leaving her a legacy of unfinished yeah, car projects. That's right. Yeah. I just hope she doesn't paint all my cars pink. Yeah. Her favorite color. So, pink. which one do you want us to do first? Do I, don't know. I don't know. man. <laughs> oh man. Uh, well, that, is that it? I mean, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, those are good ones. I mean, we've had yeah. a, recently in our car community, we had Nicole Ryan pass away. She had MS, but I, I only met her, I think, twice. Uh, Melissa was really good friends with her. She was, she made a huge impression on our car community, and um, they're the ones that run Good Vibes. Um, the, oh, oh, I, I yeah. saw her when we were up there. Yeah. Her, her and her husband. Her and I her saw husband, get out of their Jay. car, and I yeah. shot some footage of them. Yeah. She and I was away, like, oh, poor it lady. Was, it was must have been deal. recently then. Oh, yeah. It was, yeah. Um, I, I want to say, maybe a month or two ago wow. yeah. um she passed away but um that was that was that was a big deal so mm -hmm. she she made an, a huge impression she was big in in the industry she in i think she did like an automotive uh, or some sort of show i i didn't know her that well melissa introduced me to her recently so before she passed but yeah so that was um that was really hard when she passed but they did a lot of um raising funds for um you know the issues that she had the ms uh, i don't know the exact foundation that they were supporting but um the community really rallied around her and jay so that wow. was mm -hmm. pretty amazing i mean she was so. up there a month or two before she passed yeah. and that, that yeah. was uh that was cool to see that she yeah. was actually still there mm -hmm. in the trees and the mountain air and yeah. seeing all the beautiful cars and right everything. yeah yeah ms is uh is definitely a sad a sad thing to witness, you know. It's a sad way ones. to go. Yeah, for sure. it really is. But um, but they they made the best of it, and and I think everybody really supported and rallied around them. So that was that was nice. Mm. So that's Dan, it, though. Dan, you yeah. anybody you want to? Uh, you know, I don't have anyone <laughs> no? specifically, but I do have an interesting sort of topic. Here we I, go. I did a little bit. Of, I did a little bit of research. Hey, wait a minute. On is it. this is a car guy or non car guy? Uh, this this could Which be one either. Does this this okay. could be this either. Is, okay. This is this is the Dan research hour. Right. <laughs> this is where Dan does his his interesting research because I'm I was amazed that he actually could even find or even thought to look for this stuff. But I I, I really I like this take. So I, I I'm looking forward to Dan explaining his. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, like, section. <laughs> I don't know, like 20 years ago, I saw a pickup truck, you know, sitting on the 101 in traffic and so on. I saw a pickup truck and it was like, in memory of Juan Estrella, blah, 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 you know, the dates that the guy passed and so on. And I saw that and I went, I've never seen a car that has like a memorial on it like that. And <clears throat> Gabe and I were talking about this the other day and prepping for this show. And it's kind of like I did a little bit of research. This is a huge thing. And it kind of seems to have grown out of Latino car culture, particularly low riders, but not just low riders. I've seen it on trucks, mm -hmm. SUVs, yeah. you name it. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I don't know if in Latin countries that's more of a thing and it kind of carried up here since we have so much Latin culture here and so many Latin people here, Latino people here. Um, but you see this in L.A. a lot. I mean, if you're sitting in traffic on the 405 and the 101, you see these memorial tributes and i was curious i was like do people just do this and i, I googled it and <laughs> on amazon there's like three or four hundred <laughs> rear car memorials and you can literally put a giant picture of the the past person's face on the back of your car and you can say anything you want people do their dogs people do their their relatives obviously my mm -hmm. mom yeah oh you know my mom passed and so on and I, I just I found this it's sort of a fascinating thing like you know <laughs> would would any of you guys put this on your car if someone close to you passed would you put a tribute on your car I personally mm -hmm. wouldn't but mm -hmm. I um, I'm very particular about what I put on my car. Yeah. Um, but I also don't want to like see my mom's face on the back of my car all the time. <laughs> so I'm just going to not like that. But I, I understand that why people do. I mean, um, some people just have a really hard time with letting go and that's their way of coping. And 
Um, and and seeing it every day maybe just gives them those memories again. So yeah, I well, get it. And, and and I've seen some car people specific ones where this was obviously a car guy. You know, I saw it on a '57 Chevy or a '55 Bel Air or whatever. A hot rod guy. You know, a Steve Feist kind of guy. Yeah. yeah. But I but I've seen it Latino. I've seen it Asian. You know, where there was like a bunch of like Korean lettering mm-hmm. on the back and so on. Mm-hmm. In L.A., you see all this stuff because L.A. is the melting pot of the melting pot of the yeah. United States, cultures, right? Right. right. Yes. right. I, I mean, to speak to the lowriders, I know that the, a lot of the lowriders, especially the, the the ones where the whole family builds the one car, yeah. they have a one car garage and the only thing that's in that garage is that lowrider. With a $100,000 paint job. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 yeah, and and that the fa- it, it is the family heirloom, so it for makes sure. sense for the families to honor yeah. uh, someone who's passed away that's part of that family with that car because that is the kind of like the cornerstone of their mm-hmm. you know, auto mode of existence i yeah. guess you would say yeah. right. um so that does make sense you know but then yeah, but that's also extended because we are like you said a melting pot other people see it, it's like oh i want to do that too you know yeah. and i'll do it for my dog which i've never seen someone do that for their dog which i think is kind of weird but hey whatever <laughs> yeah. maybe their dog was a car i have dog. actually seen it a lot for animal pets for pets yeah, yeah animals so, well these yeah. days i mean for a lot of people their pets are their kids yeah. literally right it's like our population slow down our our slowdown in population growth they mm-hmm. say a lot of it is people are just displacing on pets yeah they're not having kids because pets are cheaper and easier mm-hmm. than having kids yeah but right. um but i i found that whole thing kind of fascinating and uh it's I, I have a little bit of experience uh i actually shot like a pilot that never went anywhere with black low riders in la and there was this whole interesting black dynamic. Black lowrider cars or black no, people? No, no, black, black people. Oh, okay. Like black okay. lowriders. Okay, okay. Uh, people of color. Well, both people are people of color, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Yeah, right. But, uh, but it was interesting, the compare and contrast between the Latino lowrider culture and the black lowrider culture. Oh, and a lot of people don't know, black people claim that they invented lowriders, not Latinos. Right. I've heard that. So, yeah. it, but it was interesting hanging with them, and in the time we hung with those people, there were a couple people that passed, yeah. and we went to some big events, and they had like the chrome placard on the yeah. rear deck of yeah. the low rider. Right. And yeah. So it's it's just it's kind of fascinating. It's like it shows the importance of cars in people's lives that these can become a rolling memorial tribute to a loved one. That's yeah. Kinda, right. That's kind of interesting. I think. Yeah. And I think that's the the big. Um, the big uh, a draw to doing this show or to doing a call to action, which we'll do later in the show, for people to share their stories about uh, loved ones that have passed away, car people that have passed away, is that the community in that, whether it be your family or your friends or um, a whole like Subaru community or your whatever. Your car homies. The pet right. community. Or the pet community, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's where you see, I mean, how many people have we heard sitting here in these chairs have told us they only got into that car because of the community or they got into it because their friends were into it right. or their family oh, was totally. into it. Yeah. It's, right. it this is so, it's, there's such a humanistic value to this that you can't ignore. Oh yeah. You know, and it's, it's really touching. I don't care if you're a car person or not. Some people like doing these memorials for people that have passed away. It's just really touching. You're like, wow, you're trying to honor this person. I think that's really, really cool. You yeah, know? Yeah. 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 And you were telling me a story at one of the cars and coffees about, Remember the guys with the Hondas and yeah, and yeah. They, that's a great story. That's I, a perfect example. Absolutely, of I forgot. It's so it's the the Peralta family. They're here locally in okay. in in um, Oxnard Ventura area, and um, I was racing with these guys back in the day, and uh, one of um, their buddies uh, or brother buddy whatever is his name is Norman, and he they were in a car. They got into a car accident coming back from a shop in North Hollywood. And um, the car, um, I forgot exactly how it happened, but the car, they, they crashed. Norman passed away. Um, and from the crash. From the crash. Okay. And um, um, he had a uh, son uh, who hadn't been born yet. And um, the, the son, you know, is now, that was 20 some years ago. Um, all the guys got out of the cars, the, all the Hondas and all that stuff. Well, when uh, Norman Jr. got old enough, um, you know, he's in the cars, all the uncles and stuff, they all got Hondas again so they can roll together with him. Wow. And, and they're, they're not just, Hon- these are pretty slick, like old yeah. school, like these things are done perfect. Yeah. But they were putting these cars together in honor of. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But they had stopped for a long time. Yeah. But when they saw Norman Jr. kind of like being interested and they didn't want him to do it by himself, 
the, his whole car club of uncles, the family, the yeah. Family. yeah, they all got the together. Car family got yeah, back which I, th- I was just like, that's a great story. So that's yeah. really that's cool. Awesome. As a matter of fact, actually, um, back in the day when Norman had passed, he had a, a pretty fast Honda for that uh, for that time. Um, they did a whole tribute to his car um, after he passed. They went to the Battle of the Imports and they put the Honda wings, the motorcycle Honda wings, on the side of the car. And uh, they took the car out and made... I think I remember that. It, oh, it was a big, big deal because, yeah. I mean, there were tears everywhere. Wow. I was crying. Everybody was yeah. crying because if he finally made that, you know, it was it was 11 second pass, which was fast back yeah, in that day. right. And um, that was like kind of like the memorial for Norman when he passed. Yeah. Um, but then 20 some odd years later, they're doing it, memorializing again with... Building the cars for Norman Jr. Like, I was like, that's story. so cool. Yeah, yeah that is great really way to cool. do it. Yeah, I love yeah. that. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's a really cool thing the way the car culture comes comes together. Yeah, you know. So, Dan, did you want anything else about the rear window <laughs> memorial? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, I, I guess I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about like, do you do you people deal with their grief in many different ways, as we know, and this kind of bleeds into the roadside memorial thing. And I'm sure you've all seen these. Mm-hmm. I mean, oh, yeah. we see yeah. them here in the county. Oh, yeah. We yeah. see them everywhere. See them, yeah. you know, bicycles, and they're all painted with mm-hmm. flowers on them and stuff. And they end up starting to look crappy because of the weather and the elements, and no one <clears> comes <throat> and cleans it up or maintains it. But uh, what what do you do? You think it's tacky, or do you think it's interesting, or do you think it's sort of touching? I mean, what what are your guys' opinion about this? About these car memorial things? I mean, I think it's I think it's touching, but I would say as somebody who doesn't know the story <clears throat> behind whatever the memorial is, mm-hmm. if I see two or three of them all in the same area, I slow down. I'm like, okay. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, you look at it as a warning well, sign? I look at it as okay. my, uh, too many people have died on this stretch. I'm oh slowing down. Um, yeah. and that, because they usually put the memorials where the accidents yeah. happen. Yeah. yeah, true. And so if you see two or three in a quarter mile stretch, you're like, okay. I'm I always I'm pulling always over or whatever. like wondering what the story was. Yeah. Every time I see a white cross or something on the side of the road, yeah. I'm always like curious as to what. what and I, I think also too part of being a mother, I have that like empathy where I'm like, oh my goodness, something yeah. happened. I, yeah. I do yeah. slow down yeah. and I I take it into consideration. <clears throat> and I so I actually um I think that they're special. I don't um I and I, I don't think I've ever had anybody that I've known that is thought otherwise they've always just appreciated that and 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 it's, yeah. and again it's a way for the family to i think memorialize like what happened and to draw attention to being careful and mm-hmm. you know whatever the story might be well mm-hmm. you have you guys driven past the james dean death scene many many times yeah I, where I've, is that i've never it's um it's on Shalam is, it, is the name of the town it's, is it's, it off 46 uh, up there well, it's right where the 41 46 meet yeah so yeah i've been so up there. i used to live in fresno and I would drive down to, to see Beth every weekend when she was living in Santa Barbara. We, before in, we got in your married. Hyundai? In my Hyundai. Uh. <laughs> and and it, I did, too. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and so I would drive past there, you know, once a week, twice yeah. a week, you know. Yeah, going it's, past it's the and, back way if, yeah. you're, if you're going up through, like, um, Paso Robles and so yeah. on, and you head out there uh, towards Fresno. Exactly. Okay. In the farm country okay. out there. It's in the yeah, middle yeah, of yeah. nowhere, basically. You go to right. Paso Robles, turn right on, I think, 46. Yeah, And then 46. you connect to the, four, and then you transition to the 41. Okay. And You've probably right driven that through there, Gabe. You just didn't I know. just drove not through that. I drove past the 46 on my way from Marysville to yeah. this weekend. So I know exactly where that's at. I didn't yeah. know that that was where I didn't either. And, and you'll see a big tri- tribute. It's about a quarter, quarter mile down. If okay. you're heading to the west, it's about a quarter mile to the right. Yeah. There's a little rest stop, and I think there was a restaurant there at one point. Don't yeah. know if there is, but there is a, a James Dean memorial there. Mm. I, I know this is going to probably piss off a lot of people. <laughs> How dare anyway. you be but controversial? Anyway. I know, right? <laughs> Why? I mean, I understand that uh, uh, James Dean was a badass, and I get all that. But I was, if his passing, if the way he and the way he passed, um, didn't happen, would he? have the same effect that it has on people because i've seen a lot of people like that i mean they're hardcore james dean fans um maybe even dress like him. i've seen people dress like him or whatever i mean it's not a bad person to dress like but um would the death have have if, if he if he was still alive today let's just say would it have the same effect as his passing did because i feel like 
that's part of the mystique of James Dean. Oh yeah, he was gone too How soon, right? Yeah. Live fast, die young, leave yeah. good-looking corpse. That's where that saying came from. Yeah. It's James Dean. Well, right. and I think that it's the case with a lot of people. I think people uh, get a little bit of like an infatuation with the idea of death, and and it becomes this. It, and I and I and I know Paul Walker was amazing. He was a great actor, and everybody loves the Fast and Furious movies, but. It's kind of like that with him too. I think. Yeah, um, I, agree. I think with his passing, it just caused a huge shift and steer in like that the community. And so I think, yeah, I think that definitely has. Well, with Paul Walker part. too, he died with doing almost yes. what we saw in the movie. Exactly. Right. Yeah. right. When yeah. you look at that, crazy. you're like, wow, yeah. that's just yeah. insane that that's yeah. how he died. Right. For you know, sure. this, and the, and with the thing about James Dean was James Dean was just starting to reach the peak of his career. Yeah. He was the hottest actor at the time. Yeah. Um, he had worked with some of the biggest actors. He was yeah. super young. He had that kind of the rebel without a cause. Exactly. Yeah. He had that yeah. attitude, yeah. and all of a sudden you're using this Porsche, going to go on a race, and then boom, yeah. he's killed. No, it's very romantic. It's, it's romantic. It's, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a romantic so, thing, yeah, which right. sounds Absolutely. perverse, but it's it, true. It's true, though. It's, yeah. Yeah. People do romanticize death. I think yeah. that's... Uh, mm. it's It's... That's just how it, it is. It reminds me of um, Steve Irwin, you know, getting killed by a, yeah. a Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I was like, yeah. well, of course, because that's what he does for that's, a living. Yeah. It'd be weird if he was killed on the 101 freeway. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. Right. Um, exactly. So I was like, okay, that when I heard him, that he passed away, I was like, how did he die? And I was like, oh, well, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. You know? I mean, yeah. he's escaped death how many other times? Right. Well, and it's the 27 Club with the rock stars, you know, Jim Morrison, yeah. Uh, yeah. J- Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, you know, they're they're rock stars. They died essentially doing yeah. drugs, right? right? That's the thing. Yeah. The rock star thing? Yeah, it's the romanticized yeah. death, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm. I'm, I still, I'm, I'm glad we cheered everybody up. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a morbid show, but it's true though. It's interesting to yeah. talk. I about, hope you're though. feeling better after about oh, oh yeah, about 30 minutes, and you're feeling good. Oh yeah. By the way, <laughs> since you love the show so much, like, follow, subscribe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that would be great. Just More death. Uh, hit that like button. More death subscribe. coming at you. <laughs> That would be great. We need feedback. Do you want us to talk about death more? Because whatever will get us the follows, you know. I mean, <laughs> thank you, Gabe, for coming up with this great. Oh, well, idea. you know, anything, anything. Can do. Well, okay. So speaking of that, the whole topic came up because I was over at um, uh, Rotary Thirteen B uh, One's uh, shop. Andy Lee is down. He lived, or his shop is down in uh, Temple City, and he's. Uh, part of the seven stock team with Bernie Herrero who he had on the show and I was over down there doing a photo shoot uh, of some of his cars and in his out uh, in his outside parking lot there was a um, I forget what year it is but it's a FC RX-7 so it's the second gen RX-7 and it was sitting out there and it had a roll cage in it and some racing seats in it uh, and it was just you can tell it's been sitting out there for a couple years full of cobwebs and I'm shooting pictures of it I'm like What's the story with this car? So I asked Andy and then I asked uh, uh, Bernie, but Andy was like, you know, hey, uh, this was a car that was uh, a mem- uh, one of our members, uh, his name's LC, um, and Bernie, they went halves on this car um, to track it. And um, he ended up getting a, 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 I think, a form of um, colon cancer. It was like an aggressive one. Mm. And um, they, went racing with that car um before he before he passed and that's and when he passed the car kind of went to bernie and now it's just kind of sitting there and i was like man that's that's uh i mean that was just my heart was just like oh my yeah. gosh because yeah. they all went racing with the, and he left you know he left a, a five-year-old daughter behind and you know i was just like man and i bernie had sent me all these pictures which we'll, we'll show you know um, of them all together, they were, he was part of the team, and then they got together, and then they built this car together, and they went racing, and they still have this car. And I was like, man, we should probably get this thing back on the track. Yeah. Was, how cool would that be? Obviously, You're gonna honor yeah. somebody, yeah. yeah. You get Obviously, it back you know, on the track. You know, when COVID hit and all that, they couldn't do that anymore. But um, you know, it's just stuff that like you know, time gets in the way and work and all that mm-hmm. stuff. But man, that would be cool if we could just do that real quick and honor him. Yeah. With that being said, um, you know. Uh, last year at Seven Stock, and we talked about this with Bernie on the show. Um, the guy who won the Repu, it's the Rotary Engine Pickup Truck class. Uh, his name was Dan Gleason, and what he did was he had his Repu truck, but basically it was like a Repu truck on a RX-8 chassis. It had all RX-8 undergear, it's like seats and floor pan and everything, and then even the remote control from the <laughs> RX-8 worked 
on the car. Wow. And um, it was the coolest. It was, it was my favorite uh-huh. car of Seven Stock last year. And uh, I was fortunate enough to walk with Bernie to hand him the re- uh, the award. And he was like totally taken back. And he was just like, oh, my God. The guy drove it from Chicago and back. Wow. I was like, holy smokes. This guy drove this I remember thing. hearing about he that. Ran? Yeah. And um, I, f- I found out that, that he passed away just recently. Oh, wow. And uh, uh, Bernie and the Seven Stock team, you know, they, you know, honored him on a post and stuff like that. But, you know, I was just like, man, what I, uh, and he wanted to come back. I guess his wife or girlfriend or somebody commented on the post saying that he really wanted to come back the following year to show his truck. And I was I was looking forward to seeing his truck because it was such a cool, cool build and so unique. And he was gone. I was like, oh, man. And I met the guy. I got to shake his hand and say hi and ask him about the, the truck. And now he's gone. I was like, man. That's, yeah. wow. I was like, ugh. This and I saw some of the comments. Yeah, yeah I saw some of the comments that saying, you know, he was a guy who was – Totally into rotary before anybody else yeah. was into rotary. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know. So he and he took the abuses that yeah. most rotary guys take. And was like, "Why would you do that? That's so dumb. You should swap an LS or something or whatever." Mm-hmm. And he's like, "No, I'm still sticking with it." And he was a Mazda tech for okay. I don't know, for years or whatever. So you know, he was he was living the rotary life. You know, I was like uh-huh. rotary. You know, hey, you know. But I just when I heard that story, I was like, oh, wow. man, that's just crazy to well, me life is short it's, yeah it's, it's, well and everybody has everybody has somebody they want to yeah, honor so hopefully right. hopefully folks listening to this watching have yeah. somebody in mind yeah and that's why we want to encourage people yeah um you know watching the show it's like that was this the really call to this show is we want to hear everybody's stories about um a loved one that's passed away and how you've honored them or you know even if you don't know the person if it's something you heard of or whatever it's just kind of cool like uh you know, um, when we told Christina about the show, she, uh, the first thing she mentioned was Jesse Combs. I'm like, oh, man, I forgot that she yeah. passed away. Yeah. You know, it just can happen yeah. that easily. Oh, you know? We can yeah. memorialize and immortalize. We can, right. Can, we can the hep- guy from American Pickers. Oh, oh, he, he just, just died, he Frank. He just passed away. Love that show. I watched that. And so it was. I was sad, I, you know, because you just... It's funny, you don't know somebody, but you think you do because you watch them yeah, over mm-hmm. and over, and then they pass, and it's sad. Yeah. But yeah. Um, that makes me feel really good about our um, Hot Rod Legends show. Um, if, you haven't, if you haven't watched it or listened to it, please do. Yes. Um, we had 11 panelists on there um, that were all telling stories, that, and I'm so glad they were able to tell at least a little bit of their story you know, because a lot of these guys were in their 80s, some in their 90s. Yeah. You know, some of them had had already passed, um, yeah. but we were able, they were able to talk about them on the show. And I was like, man, how cool is this? And this stuff, if they had never told it, you know, we're well, not going to find this on the internet. And that's no, that's yeah. what we kind of we were jamming to get that show yeah. put together because you know one of the guys who helped us put that together, Seth Hammond, was when I spoke to him maybe a few weeks before we had the event. He said, God, if we would have done this. You know, six months ago, we'd have two more of the guys here. Yeah, and so that's that's why we we're like, okay, there's a sense of urgency here. Let's get. This and those guys happen. definitely were like the legends of Hot Rod. These yeah. are like yeah. the grandfathers of Hot yeah. Rod, yeah. and basically everywhere in the world. That was, I feel about so it. lucky that I was able. You were there to be there and listen there. to them. It was the coolest thing ever. Yeah, wasn't it? I loved that show. Yeah. I feel like we need more shows like that. We yeah, need more. and we, <laughs> Dan and CJ and I, we were all worried. Like, like are people are going to think this is boring or too long. Oh or no, not no at one all. left. No one left. And that show yeah. was yeah. long. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I well, the could one have, I could have done it for another hour yeah. or two. I could have been like wow. listening to more stories. Yeah. yeah, I was about to say the one guy who did leave left because. Because he drove a 1933 Indy car that had no headlights. Oh, that's right. right. Get, get home before it's too late. <laughs> so he had to leave to go yeah. before the sunset. He had a curfew. Yeah. yeah, he had a curfew. Yeah, I think I, I think you know doing something like that again would be cool. Obviously, we'll do it differently. Um, but you know, I would like to get more people on the show. Like uh, pretty soon, we're gonna have. Um, Bob Moravez, who we talked about, Floyd Lippincott, a.k.a. Story. Floyd Lippincott. Love his We're going to do his story soon. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, a lot of the old uh, San Fernando Valley hot rod guys uh, know about him. Um, we're excited to cover his story. And we just want to keep covering stories of these guys. And and not just them, but we're hearing about stories about just people randomly across the country. That's why we want to have a call to action to all you, all you people listening and watching. You know, hey, send us your stories. You know, email us at the tip line plug for the tip line yeah. um and uh email us your stories just send us a couple pictures a little story and we'll talk about it on the show yeah. you know and if, if we can if we're able to get you on the show like cool but you know at least at the very least let's just talk about your show you get it on camera totally tell tell your story and 
you know. And we, and we we've been trying not to separate season one from season two, but we do have season two coming up. Yeah, well, I mean, and we're going to make some cool changes. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a new year, new you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're going we're going kind of high tech, higher tech. We're, uh, what would you, Dan? How would you put it? We're going to be able to talk to people all over the world. Is there a big go. deal. There we go. We're we're gonna we're gonna do stuff that a typical podcast doesn't do unless That's it's like awesome. one of the really high end ones that actually has money. And we're gonna be able. To yeah, we have no in. money. In case, you, in case you guys are wondering, we have zero money. We're, we're gonna be able to bring in guests from all over the world, though, and all over the country, especially, which will be really cool. Yeah, and, yeah. And I mean, that is the biggest focus for us now, even more so than ever. Now, this is for, show forty two. Show forty two. Yep. Um, the more we talk to people, the more we want to get these stories. But obviously, this stuff ta- takes time, money, and efforts. And you know, we're doing what we can, but uh, we just want to find ways to get stories more and more and faster and uh, easier. So you know, a lot of people we can't fly them in or they can't come in. So yeah. we're gonna try to get to them wherever they are, you know, uh, remotely or whatever. And uh, considering we live in a Zoom world now, yeah, <laughs> Zoom to whatever. Yeah, at, at, the, end the, at the end of the day, we just want to get the stories captured. We'll yeah. get them captured, and yeah. hopefully they'll come with a lot of pictures. A lot of these guys that we get pictures from, they take pictures of a picture. Or, you know, they're that old school. Yeah, yeah. yeah. which is fine. We'll take we'll yeah. take whatever we we'll can take get. It. You know, we'll take it. Um, mm-hmm. But guys like uh, Tony Baker, the historian, you know, capturing all these guys' stories, he could only do so much because he does it in written books. Right. You know, we're just trying to do it at a faster rate digitally, of course. So. Well, speaking of photos that we'll take, is I spoke to Uncle Eddie down in Florida, and he sent me a photo. Do you, you, you know, you, you I remember know, Uncle, you know Eddie. Uncle Eddie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In case, our our you guys thought he had the RV in the driveway, or in, well, they're thinking of, of the vacation. Uh, yeah, exactly. Team, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice no, shitter. Shitter's full. Yeah, this <laughs> is <laughs> this is actually my Uncle Eddie who lives down in <laughs> Vero Beach, Florida. CJ's Uncle Eddie. And yeah. I said, you know, he go. He watches every show. He goes, oh, I know you guys are on show number whatever forty one. I'm like, I don't even know what show. <laughs> <I'm doing." laughs> and <clears throat> I said, he goes, yeah, I used to have a Corvette. And I said, well, send me a photo of you in the Corvette. Yeah. So he finally did. So we'll put this up right now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and um, it's, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it was a 1965 selfie or not, but it's all, <laughs> and, and Eddie, you'll have to explain it to us, but it's all crooked and the car, you'll see like a little piece of the car and there's Eddie's part of Eddie's head. So I'll put it up there. You, oh, you yeah, guys yeah. Get it. It's, it's very, it's very funny. Let's take yeah. a look at that. <laughs> Actually, uh, speaking of which, uh, you know, this is, a, I, gr- I think, a perfect time to talk about, like, people that have reached out to us. Yeah. Um, someone who just recently reached out to us, I think, last n- last night, as a matter of fact, and it ties in with kind of what we talked about earlier, uh, was a guy, I forget his name, is Thomas, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm gonna get it right here. Um, he actually messaged us. You know, come come from and yes, he you know he likes the stories and, and that we're telling and, and He's super talented man. Yeah, uh, Thomas Michael Petsis. Uh, I'm I'm sorry if I screwed up your name, <laughs> dude. Um, but um, he sent us a bunch of pictures and he said that he was a. I'm gonna quote, quote him. Motorsports metal artist. I'm like, bro. Yeah. What is that? Intriguing. And he, and he tells me and he sends me a bunch of pictures. Apparently, this guy um, does all the NHRA trophies. He metal the metal sculpture trophies. He wow. he makes them. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And uh, that he cool. he he used to work for uh, um, Schumacher Racing um, in any about Indianapolis. And that's Michael, where he is. Michael Schumacher. Yeah. No, not Michael Schumacher. Michael? Uh, uh, as a uh, Don Schumacher. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And um, <laughs> he sent me a bunch of pictures, and one of the pictures was um, of Jesse Combs. Him and Jesse Combs. And I, the a model of or a replica of um, her the jet car the I think, jet right? car yeah. yeah yeah and I was like whoa what and are not the, knowing that not, not knowing Christina yeah. was going to yeah. be on today talking and, about and it. he doesn't know that we're talking about him on the show now he will <laughs> and, and I'll tell him but I just thought that in his uh, Instagram handles cold hard art and uh, man it, it some of the stuff he's got there it's, it's beautiful absolutely yeah. incredible we're gonna get him on the show with our new technology yeah, we're get yeah. Him on the show. love those craftsmen <laughs> yeah, love love talented. the people that are still yeah. doing it old school yeah, yeah. it's like yeah. Awesome. working with metal and he doesn't look like an old coot so you know, <laughs> <laughs> he, looks like he doesn't look anything guy. like us are exactly you <laughs> exactly so well, and maybe he will inspire <clears throat> generations below him to keep the the craft going Absolutely. I mean because that's pretty special what he I does. love to find out what, how he got into that I mean that is yeah. really really cool yeah. specialized mm-hmm. yeah, yeah that is cool yeah. that is yeah. cool so <laughs> I don't know, I'll wrap up I mean because I know we're getting close here but just I'm gonna besides a tribute to Richard Keller 
yes. and, the, and the hat, which I'll probably wear more than once. It's actually pretty comfortable. Yeah, yeah it's cute. Yeah, I yeah. like it. It looks good. So my, my dad passed about four months ago. So mm-hmm. I was going through all of his stuff. And, and he had a, a certain box that I, I never knew existed. And it was all of his high school, college stuff. Oh, cool. <laughs> and in it is an envelope with a piece of paper. And I open it up, and it's the sales slip for the 19, I think, 52 MGTD. Mm. And I think we've got old film of it. I think we transferred it. Yeah, part of that f- we do have some old film yeah. of that car, I think. And I yeah. think that's the one it is. That's what it is. But um, it, So we, I've got the sales slip, and then right behind it was a photo of him standing there as a football player. Because he played college football in, in Tarkio, cool. Missouri. <laughs> and so they were all kind of stuck together. But he is one of, obviously, he's one of the reasons I was into, you know, I got into cars. Yeah. He mm-hmm. was always talking about it. Uncle Eddie was always talking about it. <laughs> and his, you know, my grandfather was into cars and he worked, mm-hmm. he was a tool and die maker who built, you know, tools for the auto industry. I mean, and tools for pretty much any industry. But, you know, in Buffalo, it's pretty blue collar and it's, you know, you know, it's the Harrison radiator, and you I mean you had all those up there. It was and everything was connected to the automotive industry up there, mm-hmm. and so it was. That's just how I grew up, and it was fun to see that paperwork. And it was I actually brought it here, so I'm going to take a screenshot of it. Mm-hmm. And we'll pop it up so everybody can. Yeah. see Yeah, that's so yeah. cool. That reminds me of a, a story of, of um, when I was a kid. My uncle, my uncle Armando, um, he had a Ford Capri, a yellow one. And that thing was like the coolest thing on the planet. I think he had one of like those alarm things that had the keypad inside the dash and i was like what does that do <laughs> you know whatever Start pushing things. yeah and he had he had project cars around the house and i just you know my brother and i vandalized it i think one time and, <laughs> but but it just reminded me because like i remember being in that car probably without a seat a child seat and whatever just kind of tooling around <laughs> yeah, there but, but that was way back when yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. back when times were exactly fun. um and i remember um you know, I think that's probably one of the biggest reasons. My dad was a car guy, but my uncle was too. And just having that ride in those cars and remembering, my aunt just sent me a picture of it recently, and I'll we'll post it. But I was just like, I remember that car. How cool was that yeah. car? Yeah. You know. And when every time I hear Ford Capri, I think of my uncle. You know. So it's just interesting that you bring that up with your uncle Eddie. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. And, I, I'm yeah. sensing no, a theme here because my uncle was the same way. My uncle Ray, who's still alive, lives up in Monterey. <laughs> Uh, yeah, near Laguna Seca, mm-hmm. right? Uh, I have memories of a kid in Camarillo, him pulling up to my grandparents at Easter in a right-hand drive Rolls Royce, Ooh, <laughs> silver wow, phantom. Fancy. And then two years later, he pulled up in a DeLorean. <laughs> oh. And he had one of the original 240Zs, like maybe, what, a 69, a 70? Wow. So my uncle was a cool car guy. He lived down in Manhattan Beach, which there's no place to park cars, but... Um, my uncle was a cool car guy too. You know? So you were surrounded awesome. by car guys, but you're not one. <laughs> <clears throat> you're such a you're disappointment to, to your family, Dan. <laughs> I am. I I have an appreciation for nice cars. Let's put it that way. I may not own one. I may not drive one. But FYI, I have an no one buys the non-car guy thing, Dan. Just, yeah. Yeah. just so you know. <laughs> I still drive a Corolla though, so I'm yeah. much of a car guy. It's all right. I, hey, I saw you diss my Tesla on the Porsche show, so you know, <laughs> I'm a car guy and I drive a Tesla. So. Yeah, yeah. And he disses my old Hyundai, and I've, I haven't had it since 1994. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Well, my, uh, do you have any my, cars we can disc, Christine? My, yeah, actually. Well, my mom had a car growing up that um, was embarrassing. So I made her drop me off at school around the corner. What was it? It was a Pacer. Oh, <laughs> AMC Pacer? And it was brown. It was oh, jeez, a was brown Pacer? It was bad. It was a bad looking car. So but. that was before <laughs> Wayne's World made that car. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. It was oh, embarrassing. Actually, I don't know if Wayne's World did but that. But on that theme, though, so my dad... When because we I grew up in Buffalo, and then we moved to California, but just before we moved, I think my dad bought it a couple years before, 1974 AMC Gremlin. Oh, Ooh, the Gremlin. Gremlin! So okay. we moved to California. It's a total rust bucket. Yeah. Guess what? My first officially my first car was was <laughs> the a Gremlin. rusted out the 1974 Gremlin. Gremlin. Yeah, yeah. I think the Gremlins have a little bit more credit compared to the Pacers, though, too. <laughs> I think they're both equally like... Yeah, I was about to say. I mean, they were both equally hated, yes. uh, but now they're yes, kind of like yes, cool yes. because they were hated. Oh, people yeah. collect them now yeah. and think they're yeah, cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. If they didn't rust away, yeah. if they're still there. Yeah. Well, well, the Gremlin X, we saw when I did a, I, I, I judged a car show two weeks ago, Lemon Festival in Goleta. Mm-hmm. I walk up, one of the cars I get the judge, 
Gremlin X. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. So the X had the V8. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And they didn't V8 make in a little car yeah. like that. Well, well here's yeah. the thing. Because I was sitting there talking to the owner about it, and you know, we're talking about you know a Gremlin with a V8. You know, it's pretty well, rare. Really rare. And, yeah. and you know, the question was, well, why? Well, my guess is that you know, Gremlins really were supposed to be, you know, gas, uh, uh, like gas misers. Back, right. in, back when right. the gas crisis the OPEC, started. The yeah. OPEC era, right. right. And so people were buying those because they wanted, you know, good gas mileage. Mm-hmm. Throwing a V8 in it blew that out of the water. Yeah. And if you had a V8, you were trying to make a muscle car. You're not going to compete with a Cuda or <laughs> any other thing like that. So people just it fell into this weird niche. It's Who's neither here nor V8 there, as Gremlin, they say. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but yeah, but, but it was super clean. We didn't yeah. we didn't do our most hated car episode yet. We got That's, oh. that's got to come up, Gabe. We need <laughs> to do that. We need to. The most hated, most controversial <laughs> hated cars. We need to do an episode. So if you want to, yeah, if you want to piss off a bunch of people, because oh, you know yeah. there's somebody who loves whatever we're going to talk of about. Yeah, yeah, right. but to each their own, right? Yeah. That's like okay, it. so that brings up a second call to action that we want our listeners to do: send us pictures uh, and stories of your car that you know. Well, this is in general, but send us pictures of your car that you think that uh, people hate or like or whatever. Whatever. Yeah. Or, or you just have a funny story about your uncle, you know, Eddie. Doing some, yeah. you know, <laughs> weird stuff, you know. Yeah. I think it car. would be funny to do a little segment on that show where we uh, people send in their cars and we roast people's cars. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> what the hell were you thinking there? <laughs> as long as we have their permission, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I love the roast idea. Yeah. Roasting is fun. Well, Everyone it, loves a roast, yeah, right? Yes, it's do. funny because um, you can roast a car, but then there'll be a whole slew of people that is like, dude, that car's. You do you're, yeah. you're crazy. That's yeah. like, that's a great car. Do you know how cool yeah. that is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, don't you know why that's a cool like car. you don't know anything. Yeah, you well, know. And do that's your what, research. Yeah, that's what's great about the car community, though. Yeah. Everybody has their opinions. Everybody has the things they like and don't like, and that's why it's nice to like pick and choose car shows nowadays. Because some people like Porsches, some people yeah. don't. Like it's yeah. it's some people like supercars, some people don't. Like it's yeah. You know. All right, so, <laughs> we've completely gone off topic. We have, yeah, but, but yeah. you know what though? But you know what though? This, this brings up an interesting point because you said you just judged a car show, and I was I was asked to judge the same car show, but I said no because I'm too biased. I, <laughs> I, I, I you can't ask me. I'm, I I will totally rig that election, <laughs> right? When you judge a car show, or do you think? And you've been involved with so many car shows, Christina. Yeah, I've been a judge at a car show, too. When um, you judge a car at a car show, do you ever consider the owner and the owner's story? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. so do you think it's critical when you're judging a car, um, you base it off of the story and the owner of the car? I mean, in, in general, not just for the ones that you've done. I It plays a part in yeah. my judging. I mean, that's what I would say. But I wouldn't base it entirely on that. I, I would say it's probably about... Uh, at least a quarter of what I um, what I try and judge on. Um, Usually, you've got categories, right? Yeah, okay. and that yeah. and even if it's listed or not, I kind of throw my, in my head. I throw a little owner story yeah, in there. Right. Okay. See, this is why yeah. I can't be a judge because like the owner could be a complete dickhead, but he's got an awesome <laughs> rotor in my. I'm voting for that fucking car. Yeah. You know, so I, don't ever ask me to be a judge at <laughs> a car show. You know, I'm the worst guy. That's why I like it when people are with their cars at car shows, yeah. so that yeah. you have a chance to talk to you them about their them. car, sure. yeah. and you get a real sense of their their passion for their car. And to me, that's that's more special than. Than dropping it off at a shop and paying ten grand for somebody to yeah. do something. Well, and another reason yeah. to stick around with your car, I I'd say I think I judged that weekend fifteen cars, something like that, and there were I think about a hundred cars, but I had my had fifteen, a group of fifteen. I'd say out of the fifteen, there were probably four or five where there was no owner and they kept, everything was shut and locked up. Yeah, <laughs> pretty hard to judge. Yeah. Was yeah. it in a rough neighborhood? No. <laughs> no, I mean you're surrounded by a bunch of lemon people. It's what, who, what's there to be afraid of? So. I I mean I have to judge. I'm supposed to judge the trunk. Yeah. I'm supposed to judge the engine bay. I'm supposed right. to judge the interior, and I'm trying to look through a window and yeah. can't find anybody. That's now that's a mistake. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, if yeah. I if I can't see it, I can't judge it. If I can't judge it, you're not going to get points. And mm. I wonder if you can win just off of a cool story. Um, I've I've what? heard of people. Yeah? I I know a lot of friends that are judges at different shows and. And they've told me that they absolutely picked a car because of the story. Really? Uh huh. Yep. 
Yeah. Maybe we should do a virtual car show with everybody's story, and then we put it on the, like, the website. And like, <laughs> that's cool. Let's pick the car. Well, you've already said you're biased. If there's, I anybody- won't be a judge. You, no, Dan, and yeah. Christina can be a judge. <laughs> one, one, one Rotary shows up, and he's going to yeah. win, right? Winner, yeah. winner, Rotary. Yeah, winner. maybe we can get Helm to show up for that one. <laughs> actually, actually, he would because he is he is all about the weird details that no one cares about. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. But I, I, hey, I wouldn't be an, I would be a promoter. I'm a good promoter for the show, <laughs> uh, but but I won't actually be a judge. So you know, okay. I'll have to up me being biased. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I'm not buying it. <laughs> I hope nobody sees me at seven o'clock thinking that I judge the cars. Oh I, my gosh. You know, Oh boy, the green I, ribbons, right? <laughs> I just I just carry the awards for Bernie the, for him to hand them out. So, which by the way, Christina will be at seven stock. Yeah, Miss Motorhead booth. Oh, good. Yeah. Right. Yes, and we'll, and we'll be, there. be there. We'll, we'll be, be there. at Seven yeah. Stock. Yeah. We'll be at Seven Stock. So yeah. it's gonna be a fun time. I'm excited yeah, for sure. <laughs> we'll be there Friday night. We'll be hungover by Saturday morning, pretty much. <laughs> All right. I need to book my hotel. That reminds yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> I think Beth wants to go too. Okay. <laughs> She's gonna love well, it. She said she wants. She said she wants. She'll to love we'll for at least ten minutes. On I Thursday. would love for her to be there. Yeah. I think that'd be great. We'll Tell happens. her she can we'll come hang out at the booth with the girls. Yeah, <laughs> if she oh, gets there you bored. Go. Yeah. <laughs> Seven stock should be fun. It'll be fun. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right, guys. We cover everything, and we so. left it, and we ended the show on a high note. High note. Yes. Boy, did we veer off topic. Boy, yeah. we did. Wow, that's all right. But that's amazing, right? But two thirds was on topic. Well, at least we veered off towards the end. So if people have already tuned out, they won't miss anything. True. True. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Are you gonna add a? Are you gonna add a subscribe button? So if we ha- we have been. Yeah, we have. Okay. We have a is it up here button. or is it down? No, it's down low. It's down low. So no, just, down keep, low. just keep doing Point that. Point at your crotch. Keep doing Point it. at your crotch, CJ. There you go. It's right. nowhere near where you're pointing, by the way. <laughs> is it? Is it down here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Down there. Down yeah. here. It's Somewhere centered. Down it's centered. The yeah. good thing is, CJ, is that um, on the audio podcast, no one will ever see it. So no. don't worry about it. <laughs> just Why is everybody laughing? CJ is making an asshole of himself. All right. Thanks for watching, <laughs> listening. Whenever you watch and listen on, please like, follow, subscribe. And we thank you for watching. And we will see you. That's what I got to say. We will see you west of Tulsa.